What's going on? I'm Spencer Tills. Now Trayvon Miles is not on desk. He's at the Stephen Decatur girls basketball game, which they just pulled out a one point win. It looks like he'll have a live update from there as well as Kaylina Speakman. Well, she's at the state championship for wrestling. That's across the bridge and we'll have an update on what's going on over there a little later on in the show. But we got a lot of things to get to, including the big story of what happened last night. The shocker in the capital city. Third seeded Dover upset in their first postseason game this year. We'll show you how their great season came to a very disappointing end. Plus, Cesar Rodney girls team was looking to punch their ticket over to the Bob Center as they gutted out a win over Howard. We'll have highlights of that one in just a bit. And you want to talk about a bad beat. Wait till you see the SU men's basketball team. Well, they had a season coming to an end in the worst way as they had a very tough beat. We'll show you how it all went wrong for them as well. But first, we got to talk a little bit of action that happened just earlier today. I was down there. It was the Stephen Decatur girls basketball team. As I said, they had a good opportunity of pulling out that win. Now we're going to have that live shot a little later on in the show. But first, we're going to talk about what happened just down the road from there. That would be the Pocomoke boys basketball team. It was a regional championship game of their own. They were matched up against a red, red hot Kent County team that came into this thing fresh off of upset against Cambridge. But I tell you what, the Warriors, well, they were ready to go. Not an empty seat in the house, sold out arena. And they got to see a bit of a good show here early on. It's going to be Mark Juan Green working his way into the paint, finds Manny Camper. He goes to the floater and puts it in for two. Shortly after that, this time he finds Shamar Turner, pulls up from about 15 and bang. They were up four points in the second quarter, but that's when Pokemoke finally got going. It's going to be a nice little ball movement. Eventually finds Tyrone Matthews, who gets the bump, finishes for the and one to get it started. Then defense would be the spark. Jarek Johnson gets the block. And he's going to take that thing all the way the other way, glides in for the easy two right there. As all of a sudden they would have the lead. The third quarter now, and Matthews just went bonkers. Hits a three, pulls up, hits another three, then goes to the floater in the paint and buries that one as well. They were up 20 in a heartbeat. And then this was the play that really changed the whole complexion of the game. Camper, two minutes left in the third, sitting on four fouls, picks up his fifth off of a push right there. Done for the day, and that's when Pokemoke would go ahead and just pull away. Tyree Thornton, you are silly for that move right there. Goes to the crazy reverse land, and how about this? The Warriors are crowned regional champs as they find a way to get it done and headed to the Xfinity Center. 80-62 to the final. Whatever we had to go through all year long, with a couple of losses in the Christmas tournament, big loss to Decatur, you know, early in, uh, in January. Um, our goal was still steadfast, that we wanted to get there. So whatever it took, night in and night out, one game at a time, we were focused on getting back to this point. Well, a huge congrats to him. Well, there was also the regional championship game going on in Centerville as Queen Anne's was matched up against a very tough team as well. That's Hartford Tech. Sold out crowd early on. Cassius Warren was making it happen. Pulls up on the three ball from the corner to get the scoring started. That was opened up to 8-2 to two lead. Then check out this sequence. Vernon Ashley attacks the rim, gets the layup, the layup that is, hustles back, gets a steal, and it would lead to this. A beautiful dime down to Ahmad Gray. That man has seen a weight room in his day and showed it off right there. Home team up 10, not even close to done. Tavon Brown finds Jawan Moore on the weak side. He gets the lay-in to drop, then Moore gets the long rebound, goes behind the back to lose the defender. Can't convert the lay-in right here, but I told you Gray's seen a weight room and shows it off again. The left hand kisses it off the glass, plus the foul. Game high 19 for the senior. To the second half we go, Harford Tech just trying to get anything going. Darius Dangerfield has a good game or a good name and a good game as well. Gets the floater to drop. But this was all about Queen Anne's. It was going to be their special night. Warren with an absolutely sick dime down to Moore, who finishes at the rim. And they were going crazy in Centerville. Game not even done yet. Ticking down the last seconds. The Lions, they punched that ticket to the Xfinity Center as well. And in blowout fashion, 68 to 30 won the final. It feels amazing. Ain't nobody believing us after Busy left. And we proved them wrong that we region, now we're regional champs. I'm so hyped. It's amazing, yo. I always wanted this ever since I was a freshman. And now it's almost great come true. It feels great. We've been expecting this for a long time. We've been waiting for this forever. First time in school history. We'll have a little more on that in just a minute, but let's go ahead and take things over to the first state. It was the second round of the state tournament last night as Dover was having their first taste of the action, taking on St. Thomas Moore. And the Ravens came to play in this thing early on. Good defense there, strips the ball from Jordan Allen, and Greg Bloodsworth brings it up the court, finds Elias Ravel, who slams that thing home. 
St. Thomas More fired up after that and back comes Dover. Allen finds Troy Scott who's able to finish and transition for two. Senators still fighting. This time Allen's long ball is going to be off the mark. Steven Justice though has his back like a good teammate would. The tip is good right there. Then the Ravens big man got going in. This guy has a lot of meat right there. Aaron Scott gets the bucket down low, hits the offensive boards, and he's going to go ahead and get another put back as well. Dover down at the break, trying to stay in this thing in the second half. Mike Douglas here pushing the rock, finds Allen, who slaps the backboard on the layup right there. But St. Thomas and Moore making just one more play down the stretch. Good ball movement finds Ravelli, and he gets yet another huge slam at the rim. How about this? The Senators, they ups, upset in the first game of the tournament, 59-55, to 55, the final, a very disappointing season. As for Woodbridge, they were looking to pull off an upset last night as the Blue Raiders hit the road to take on top seed Sanford. And the Warriors are led by this guy, Mikey Dixon. You might have heard of him. He's arguably the best player in the state. Early on, the Blue Raiders did not care, though. Hassan Corbin gets loose in the court, lays that thing home. A few plays after that, and this time it's Tavion Waters getting to the hoop, and he's able to put that thing in as well. The Warriors, though, come firing right back. Freddie Ryle goes to the finger roll finish right there at the cup. A few plays after that, and Dixon would start the highlight reel. Comes off the elevator screen, step back, pull up three. Give me all of those. And then he gets out in transition for not one right here, but he's going to go ahead and get two monster highlight dunks right there. Woodbridge doing all he could to hang around in this thing. Just not enough down the stretch. It's going to be Hassan Corbin pulling the trigger on the wing. He finds the bottom of the net, but time would eventually run out on their run, and the Cinderella season comes to an end for Woodbridge. 75-48 to 48 the final. How about Milford? They were on the road last night as well, taking on St. E's. The Bucks. good early offense. Breon Murray finds San Martinez. And he's able to finish for two, but back come the Vikings. Elijah Dockery misses the long ball, but Nate Thomas is there for the rebound. He puts it back up and in, plus the foul. Back and forth we go. Milford's turn. Murray on the attack. A little sidestep past the defender, able to put it in. The Bucks then started to really feel it. Devin Kravitz would get all the way to the rim right here. Goes to the left sweeper, but he misses it. But it gets cleaned up here at the rim. That would be Riley right there. And then all of a sudden, the game started to come to a little bit of chippiness. A little foul's being called. Riley gets called for his fifth foul right there. He's going to go ahead and be sidelined for the rest of the game. Did not matter, though, because Henry Naismith would pick up the slack. He's an All-State nominee for a reason. Goes up and slaps the backboard for two. Naismith again attacking, able to finish this one off. Plus the fifth foul on Dockery. That would prove to be huge. Then the defense would close this thing out. Marcus Correa says go ahead and get that weak stuff out of here right there. The huge block. The Bucks get it done. They're moving on. 63-46 to 46 the final. And they're not going to be just our only team playing in the Bob here tomorrow as Smyrna is moving on as well. They top Apoquinimix 64-51. Up next is the matchup against fourth seeded Mount Pleasant. Like I said, that'll be tomorrow at 530. I'll be there and we'll have highlights of that one later on tonight as well. Well, taking it to the college level, SU began their NCAA tournament run last night when they took on Middlebury in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Now the Seagulls looking to make it to day two, but they ran into some early trouble. They were down here in the first half when shots finally started to go. Chad Baritsky right here pulls up from distance, puts it in for three. A few plays after that, Bobby Bates attacking slithers his way in there, goes to the left hand, able to put it in, and then Gordon Jeter, he's had some kind of year for him. The Easton grad working, working hard, goes to the jump hook, rolls in for two. Still, SU was down 11 at the break. Second half, Rocky Harris pulls the trigger. The Kent County product showing that he can still shoot the pill right there. They're down three with 15 seconds left. Then this happened. Jeter, again, going to work. The blow by gets to the cup, puts it in for two. Now they're down one. 0.2 seconds left, the lob to Jeter. Are you kidding me? Do you believe in miracles? He makes it happen. We're going to OT, or so everyone thought. The refs would look at it again, rule that the clock did not start in time, and that the bucket was no good. And you want to talk about a heartbreaking way to see your season come to an end. The Seagulls can tell you all about that as they drop that thing. 75 to 73, the final. Well, there's a lot of wrestling going on today as well. The state championship, actually. 47 ABC's Kaylina Speakman is over at Showplace Arena and has more. We're here at the Showplace Arena in Upper Marble, Maryland, for day two of the MPSSAA State Wrestling Tournament Finals. And the final match is just going to begin in a little bit. And we have four kids from the Bayside actually competing in the finals tonight. In the 113, we have Mardella's Nasir Tucker. In the 132, Kent Island's Justin Thomas. In the 182, North Carolina's Alex Eaton. And then in the 132 for the 3A is Stephen Decatur's Andrew McCann. 
and I'll be updating all night long. So go ahead and give me a follow on Twitter at Kaylina08, and we'll have your full highlights tonight at 11. Until then, Spencer, back to you. Thanks, Kaylina. And like I said, there's a few really good wrestlers you're going to want to look out for. But it's time for a quick commercial break. Coming up on the other side, I'm going to be joined on desk by the man that has helped take Queen Anne's to a place they have never been before. Head coach Del B. Craft on desk next. My name is Dre Green from Cambridge, South Chester High School. And you watching Del Marble Sports Inside. Mommy, I'm on TV. Ah!